This is the uh, IoT show, the Internet of Things show, and today we have Ted Wei with us to talk about machine learning and IoT. Yeah, all right. Hi. So Ted, hi, and tell me a bit what are you doing at Microsoft? Sure, I'm a program manager on the Azure Machine Learning team, and so what we do is, from my role, is uh, integration with Azure IoT Edge, so getting machine learning models on the IoT Edge, and also hardware acceleration of machine learning models. How do we make cool. machine learning models run super fast? Cool, so uh, my background is embedded developer. Mm -hmm. So for me, machine learning is kind of a scary. Okay, yeah. So um, the first thing I'd like you to do is kind of explain to us, like if I was five years old, mm -hmm. what is machine learning? Okay, yeah. What is machine learning? If you were five years old, maybe you'd be thinking about these like robots that are AI and they're yeah. trying to kill you and stuff like yeah. that. But it's, it's really <laughs> not like that. At the end of the day, it's just basically an algorithm running. And so let's try to demystify machine learning and first okay. talk about conceptually what's really happening. So imagine I'm trying to predict whether a banana is ripe or not. Okay. So that's I have the five year old thing. Yeah, that's Fine. a five Perfect. year old. Yeah, like so that. five years old. Uh, <laughs> so banana ripe. Okay, so you have a banana. And let's say the only thing you know from the banana is the, uh, out, the readings from an instrument. Mm -hmm. And the instrument will tell you um, how yellow the banana is and okay. how soft the banana is. Okay? So now we have to learn from some data. So I have a bunch of bananas. Mm -hmm. I already know what their readings are and I know whether they're ripe or not. So let's build a model and see how we can predict that. You're basically teaching mm -hmm. your system, right? Yes, I'm teaching my system first. And so how do we teach it? So we start with a ripe banana, and uh, my instrument tells me this is how yellow it is, mm -hmm. and this is how soft it is. Okay. So I have a few more ripe bananas, mm -hmm. Okay. so I'm getting more instrument readings. Mm -hmm. And now I also have my raw bananas, or unripe bananas, okay. and these are the instrument readings. Okay. And so you know, I just have a bunch of ripe bananas and a bunch of raw bananas. Mm -hmm. So where does the learning take place? Now what I want to do is to create a boundary between mm -hmm. the ripe and the raw bananas. And so when I train my model, what's really happening is this purple line here. So I'm creating a decision boundary between my ripe bananas and my raw bananas. Okay. And now, let's say there's a banana that you've that you've never seen before. Mm -hmm. And the only thing you know about it is what that instrument what reading measures. has, yeah. what, what, what it measures, right? And so uh, this is the, the measurement. Okay. And so based on my prediction, I'm gonna predict that this is ripe. And that's at the end of the day what's happening. So awesome. that's ripe. I have a banana with this instrument reading and this is what I'm gonna predict raw. So a machine learning model, when you're feeding in data, mm -hmm. what you're doing here is feeding it how yellow it is and how soft it is. Okay. And the prediction that comes back is ripe or raw. Okay. Can and I imagine mm -hmm. that this line is not always straight? Yes. It feels a bit simple, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that feels okay. simple. So let's talk about what happens when things get a little bit more complex. Okay. One is the data may not be what you expect, right? Mm -hmm. I had some very clean data before, and now this data is a little intermixed. Okay. My decision boundary may not be exactly perfect, and that's why not all machine learning models are perfect. Okay. So you might want to start adding more features, not just yellowness and softness. You might want to add a bunch of other features. You might want to look at decision boundaries that are um, not very linear and it's just starting to get a little crazy, and that's where the machine learning model could get a little bit more complicated. Makes sense. And actually, I would assume as well that you can make these models evolve, yes. right? Because mm -hmm. you would actually score a certain amount of data, but mm -hmm. at the same time, would also continue to evolve that model to make it better. Absolutely. So now, as you know, as more bananas come in, and then the more readings come in, and you know whether they're uh, raw or ripe, you might have a human cool. to be able to determine that, then you can evolve that model, and yeah. it becomes more accurate over time. Makes sense. And I, I'm starting to see better, actually, how IoT um, uh, will help machine learning and vice versa, mm -hmm. how machine learning will actually totally integrate into IoT scenarios where you have tons of sensors, mm -hmm. sending tons of data, yeah. then now you can start teaching models or, or actually uh, creating these models and, and applying them, right? Yeah, absolutely. So like, tell us about a scenario where machine learning actually is, is this very simple and mm -hmm. understandable model, yeah. right, mm -hmm. uh, can be applied in an Internet of Things scenario. Yeah, sure. So. Um, one device may be your entire car. So you think about your entire mm -hmm. car, all the telemetry that's coming yeah, from the yeah. car, right? And so what we can do here is basically create a, um, create a dashboard here based off of a, a solution that we have. Okay. So the solution, uh, what this is doing is basically giving you um, a lot of the data that's coming off of the car. So things yeah. like speed and um, uh, uh, fluid levels and uh, you know, all yeah. these different things that are coming mm -hmm. off, mm -hmm. right? And so let me just show you a quick, uh, um, 
uh, architecture overview of all okay. of this. So what's happening here is uh, we just have a simulator, and what it's doing is it's giving off a bunch of simulated data from cars, okay. and it's being collected. Stream Analytics is processing it, and we apply machine learning on model on top of that. Okay. And now this machine learning model has been trained. So taking in all this data from a car, it's predicting does it need to be maintained or not. Got and it. so we can predict uh, whether a car is about to break down. So mm -hmm. now instead of you know taking in your car every six months or a year at a fixed schedule and wasting time, uh, you can take it in before it's actually, maintenance mm -hmm. for that one. Before and you can broken. actually also gather data from cars coming from all over the yes. world at the same time, right? Yes. So you can actually can ingest even more data and, and do that that analytics of the data mm -hmm. at, a, at a very huge scale, right? Yeah, and that's the beauty of IoT. You have data coming in from all over the place, and now uh -huh. you have the cloud, you have your elastic compute, elastic storage, all that data is being processed, and you can build better and better models. Now you can have an overview of all the cars in the world that you're collecting data from, okay. and then you can start segmenting them. Um, are cars in this specific region requiring a different type of model okay. to predict? Uh, cars in that region, and now you have better prediction accuracy in that way. Awesome, right, cool, very interesting. I'm sure we're gonna learn more about machine learning in IoT scenarios in the future. Mm -hmm. It was a great introduction, thanks Ted. Okay, great, thank you very much.